I have here a 9 volt battery. This is going to serve as a source of direct current for a little electrolysis demonstration I'm about to do for you here right now. And once again, the purpose of electrolysis is simply this, to decompose compounds into their elements. As you know, synthesis reactions tend to be spontaneous. In other words, once you get it started, they continue on their own until they're done. However, decomposition reactions require the continuous input of energy, such as the energy from a DC power supply. This is the negative terminal of our 9-volt battery. This is the positive terminal of our 9-volt battery. Now, electrons are coming out of the negative end, and electrons will go in to the positive end. So that means that this end of the battery can give electrons to a species that needs to undergo reduction. And this can pull electrons away from any species that will undergo oxidation. Now the first thing we're going to do is the decomposition of water. H2O forms H2 plus O2, balance that out, and H is plus becomes zero, so the H plus one will undergo reduction as its charge reduces. The O is minus two, it ends up as zero, so its charge increases oxidation as those two electrons are pulled off. So let's try this. Let's see if this battery can put out enough juice to split this water up into hydrogen and oxygen. Now they're both gases, so the outcome should be fairly predictable. We now have water in this beaker, and you'll notice that there's absolutely nothing going on. We would expect if this was decomposing that we'd get some hydrogen and oxygen gas bubbles coming off of the terminals. Aha! But remember, Water alone does not conduct electricity. It requires the addition of an electrolyte. Now, what electrolyte can we add that won't interfere with this? Well, we could try salt because salt would allow this to conduct electricity, but salt does something interesting we'll get to a little later in this video. What we're going to do is we're going to add something that is an electrolyte and has hydrogen in it. Can you think of anything? Hmm, how about an acid? Specifically, sulfuric acid because the sulfate ion will not decompose under the application of electricity. Johnny was a chemist. Johnny is no more. What Johnny thought was H2O was H2SO4. As we add the sulfuric acid to this, well now, all of a sudden we're getting electrolysis. How about that, huh? So what's happening here? Simply this. Any H plus that happens to be in the vicinity of this terminal, the battery, will be force fed electrons coming off that end, turning into hydrogen gas. Now, as you know, hydrogen is diatomic when it's not in the compound, Brinkelhoff. So we have to balance the Brinkelhoff in that half reaction. Over on this side, any O minus twos that happen to be in this vicinity O minus two are going to have those two electrons stripped violently away. But as you know, when oxygen is not in a compound, it's diatomic. So we have to balance for Brinkelhoff in that reaction. Now, if we're going to double this, we need to also double that. So those two electrons are actually four electrons, right? Two for each of the oxygens. Now, the formula is H2O, so we should expect to get double the amount of hydrogen as we're getting oxygen. If you take a look at the size of the bubbles coming off the hydrogen electrode, they're not such of a much, but look at the size of these monster bubbles coming off the hydrogen electrode. They're huge! Two to one ratio of hydrogen to oxygen. What we could do to trap the gas is actually invert test tubes that have been filled with water. And as the gas goes up, it pushes the water down, filling the tube with gas. In this case, hydrogen gas. How much oxygen would you get? Well, half as much. Half as much oxygen would be trapped as hydrogen. And that's the electrolysis of water, splitting apart, decomposing a compound by adding electrical current. So what if instead of using sulfuric acid as our electrolyte, what if we had used a salt like sodium chloride as an electrolyte? Well, there you run into a slight problem, and I'll show you what I mean. We could use salt, and it will allow this to conduct electricity, but look what happens when we put sodium chloride in with water to make it conduct electricity. Here goes the salt. 
And I'm going to add a few drops of some special ingredient to this. Some phenol thaline. The reason behind this will become apparent in just a moment. Okay, let's add some water to this mix. Sorry about the noise, there's some heavy construction going on in another room. So what's happening here is simply this. We are getting hydrogen gas bubbling off of this. But we're really not getting much going on over here. There, there's not really a lot of bubbling going on here. Also, notice that this has turned pink. Why would it turn pink? Hydrogen's not a base. Phenolphthalein only turns pink in a base. So what's going on here? Well, here's the thing. You're not just getting hydrogen here. You put salt in. And when you put sodium chloride in water, it ionizes to form Na plus and Cl minus. Now, this being, again, the negative terminal, the Na plus is going to be attracted to it. And at that terminal, the Na plus will pick up the electrons that the battery is giving off and turn into pure sodium. Hey, that's wonderful. Now we can make some sodium. Except, you might remember, sodium is an alkali metal. And the instant it touches, what else do we have in here? Water! As soon as the Na touches the water, it immediately turns into sodium hydroxide, which, as you know, is a base. That's why they call metals like sodium alkali metals, because alkali means basic. So what are we forming over here? Well, apparently not a whole heck of a lot. Uh, we are getting some bubbling going on here, but it doesn't appear to be coming much from the terminal. Hmm, let's see if we can figure out what's going on here. Well, if the sodium's attracted here, then guess what's attracted here? Mm-hmm, you got it. The chlorine. Now chlorine, when it oxidizes, Cl minus, forms Cl2 0 plus 2 electrons. Okay, Chlorine is a halogen, and halogens are extremely corrosive. So um, we might actually be doing some damage to this terminal. As soon as the chlorine forms, it should attack the metal of this terminal and just go crazy. Arr, I'm chlorine, I'm gonna eat you up. Ah! Okay, we're gonna make a fresh start with a fresh battery. Once again, this flared end, that is the negative end and the round end, that's the positive end. I'm going to use a different salt this time. This time I'm going to use a salt that's going to give us a visible product. I'm going to use potassium iodide. Potassium iodide. Here it goes. All right, there we go. So potassium iodide. Well, as you can see, we're definitely getting hydrogen bubbles, a whole lot of them coming off here. But there's something else coming off of this terminal right here, this yellowish brown goop. What the heck could this possibly be? Oh, that's just wrong. Look at that, it's just brown and yuck. What could that possibly be? Well, that's easy enough to find out. See, what's happening here is, yeah, we're decomposing water. We're actually getting some bubbles coming off here, some bubbles of oxygen. Plenty of hydrogen, just a little bit of oxygen. So what else is coming off here? Apparently oxygen is not the only thing that this terminal is giving off. Well, we dissolve potassium iodide. And potassium iodide, when you put it in water, ionizes to form potassium ions and iodide ions. So the potassium ions, just as before, get attracted to the negative electrode where they pick up the electrons and form potassium, which immediately reacts with the water to form KOH, potassium hydroxide. We'll prove that in just a moment. So what the heck is this orange stuff? Well, yeah, the O might be going here, but so is the iodide. The iodide is going there. I minus one is actually going to be stripped of its electrons by the battery to form I zero. The electrons go. Iodine, as you know, is diatomic, Brinkelhoff, so we have to balance it. So this brown, this reddish brown stuff, this ugh, whatever this is, that's iodine. Now iodine is not water soluble. You might remember that the iodine molecule is nonpolar, so it's not going to dissolve in the water. So we're actually getting microscopic precipitate here. 
Oh, look, all sorts of stuff is happening. Look at all that. Ew, stuff floating around. And, oh, man. I'll bet you that's pieces from the inside of the battery. Remember, don't try this at home. All right, now, to prove that potassium hydroxide is being formed here, as the potassium forms and immediately reacts with the water, we'll add our old friend, phenol thaling. I didn't want to add it before because it might interfere with this lovely yellow, uh, forget it, I like to interfere with it, I don't like that color. Phenol thaling, at the ready, boom! Looky, looky. Isn't that just the gosh darn prettiest thing you've ever seen in your whole life? So that's electrolysis, using electric current to decompose a compound. Because as you know, compounds just ain't gonna decompose on their own.